Hi, in this video I want to talk to you and give you a bit of advice about the offences against the person. This is something of course we discuss in detail in chapter 7 of the textbook. Now, rather than looking at each of the offences in great detail, what this video is rather about is thinking about the structuring of how you would apply your knowledge of the offences against the person to particularly problem-based facts. So, in what order are you going to do that? Now, within this, we're going to focus in particular on the so-called laddered offences. These are the main offences within the Offences Against the Person Act, starting with Section 18 at the top, grievous bodily harm with the intention of causing grievous bodily harm, all the way down to assault and battery as the more minor offences at the bottom of this kind of ladder of liability. Now, this ladder of liability is, is quite useful, and it's quite, um, it's quite novel, within the law, particularly to have a number of offences of this kind, but it creates problems or it creates um, complications for you when it comes to applying those offences to problem facts. Now usually when we look at a potential criminal event and we want to identify the potential crime, we usually start off with the most serious potential offence and then work our way down until we find liability. That's certainly true of homicide offences, for example, where you would always begin with murder and then your, whether you find liability or not for murder defines the route you take afterwards. Now, when it comes to the offences against the person, it's not always practical to do that. Because let's say, for example, you have a scenario where someone simply nudges or pushes another person without their permission. It would be illogical to start with, OK, it's not Section 18 GBH because there's no GBH, there's no intention to cause GBH, it's not Section 20 for these reasons, it's not Section 47 for these reasons, it's not an assault for these reasons. You end up using a lot of time and a lot of words within either your sort of, you know, coursework type question or time within the exam, and actually you're not getting very far because it's very obvious that it's not one of those list of offences, first of all. So therefore it's sometimes impractical to start at the top in the way you, we usually would. But equally, it's impractical and it's not advisable to start at the bottom. When we're teaching these offences, and even the way we present it within the textbook, we tend to start with the most minor offences and then build up to the more serious ones as we go along. But equally, if you have a scenario whereby, I don't know, somebody stabbed somebody else in the leg, you're not going to start with, well, it's an assault because when he saw the knife coming, he apprehended force. It was a battery when the knife touched. It then became section 47 as it went in a little bit, and then a more serious offence as it went in further. Again, it becomes like Russian dolls, that you do all of the analysis for each of those offences, but actually it's only at the very, very end that you're analysing something which is important to answering the question. So because it's often impractical and not advisable to start at the top or start at the bottom, Rather, for the offences against the person with these laddered offences, it's often useful to think of various entry points for your discussion. And we set this out within the, um, the flowchart that we give you within Chapter 7 and within the Ion Assessment section, where we essentially say there's probably three useful starting points. So what we would generally advise you do, look at the potential criminal event, so when uh, John hit Sally or Sally stabbed John or whatever it might be, and think about the, the level of harm suffered by the victim. Now if you think that level of harm potentially could be a very serious one, i.e. grievous bodily harm, then you should start right at the top of the tree and you should start with section 18 and the potential liability and work your way down until you find an offence which you think is likely to be committed. But if you look at the scenario and you think, for example, it's not grievous bodily harm, it's not that serious level of harm, or it's not a wounding, at most this would probably only be actual bodily harm, then you should start at the middle level and you should start with section 47. And you can say explicitly to your reader, the level of harm here is not likely to engage the grievous bodily harm offences, so therefore we're going to start with section 47. And equally, if we're just talking about a touching or causing someone to apprehend that you're going to use force, then again, there's no point starting at the top, but rather you would say to your reader that the level of force used or the lack of force used means that the only likely offence that's going to be committed here will perhaps be an assault or battery and therefore that's the point at which you start your analysis. So the point is basically to make sure you're focusing your analysis in the relevant areas to either save you time within an exam or to save you words within a coursework type essay. But also importantly, not just to pluck the offence out of the air, but to tell your reader why you're choosing that offence. You're choosing, you're choosing to start at the top because of the level of harm you've seen is extreme. You're choosing to start in the middle because the level of harm is such that it would lend itself to that category of offences. Or at the bottom, of course, because the harm is relatively minor. And sometimes you'll find that you go through that entire ladder and actually it drops out at the bottom. That 
there isn't something that lends itself to any of those levels of harm, and actually it's not something that fits within those offences at all. So a classic example of that would be a harassment type scenario. So if somebody simply harasses, they follow, they uh, send unpleasant messages, that kind of thing, it may well be that there's no physical contact or no causing of serious harm, such that sections 18, 20 and 47 are ruled out and batteries ruled out. And if it doesn't cause the victim to apprehend the immediate threat of force, then assault's ruled out as well. You actually go down all the way through the ladder, drop out the bottom, and that's why we have these specific offences to deal with that kind of scenario. So that's why Parliament created offences of harassment, because they recognise that our standard offences against the person aren't equipped, aren't appropriate in all scenarios. So again, you can lead your reader through that and you can say it would be inappropriate to charge the more traditional offence against the person for these reasons, which leads us to the offence, for example, of harassment and stalking, and then apply those offences in detail. Okay, thank you.